Uh, good evening to everyone present here. I am Dr. Neha Kannan, and I would like to begin my presentation by quoting McDonnell. Physical evidence cannot be intimidated. It does not forget. It sits there and waits to be detected, preserved, evaluated, and explained. My topic for today is recent advances in forensic odontology and its implications in mass fatalities. So moving back in time to a little history, in the year 1897 in Paris, when victims of a fire accident were identified using forensic odontological evidence by Oscar Amelie. So nowadays, following a mass casualty, identification of victims is undertaken by the DBI, that is the Disaster Victim Identification Operation. So the DVI aims to provide a rational and scientific basis for identification of each victim. Forensic odontological comparison is one of the three principal identifiers designated by the Interpol for use in identifying victims. So coming to dental records, uh, there are numerous types of dental records. Initially, there was written dental records and it is the least useful and they are subjective in nature and have a higher error rate. Next is the odontogram, which is basically a stylized diagram of the teeth on which planned and executed dental interventions can be recorded in a visual format. Then we have clinical photos, uh, which are less helpful when uh, the body is incinerated or it's undergone decomposition or rigor mortis. Coming to dental x-rays, these are the most reliable form of dental records as they're objective and they record exactly what is present. So the most common are the bite rings or the IOPs, and they are easier to identify in presence of the radio opaque rings. So there are different methods like the X-ray superimposition method and the subtraction method. The superimposing images demonstrate similarities between the dental features in an intrusive way. So the postmortem image is superimposed on the antemortem image and turned into a negative. So when its opacity is reduced, the antemortem image becomes progressively more visible until all the overlying negative and underlying positive colors cancel to resolve the gray wherever the images are similar. So uh, this can be used to demonstrate if it belongs to the same person. So next we have the OPGs, which can be used in comparison and also in uh, multiplanar reconstruction of the CT data of both the upper and lower jaws of the victim. So coming to the 3D superimposition, the postmortem surface is superimposed on the antemortem surface scans and are secured by a low resolution CT scanner. So the gray color indicates that uh, the surfaces are matching, whereas the colors outside the range, that is outside the gray range, uh, indicates a mismatch. Moving on to the DNA analysis, which is an age old method used, there has been recent advances in DNA analysis studied by various authors. So DNA can be obtained from the pulp as it is uh, encased in between the dentin and the enamel. And it can be used for MGS, like uh, the next generation sequencing. So more recent methods are the Sobel and Canny edge detection. And it's a newer method for contouring and chasing the isoperimetric algorithm. So the output is in the form of a neural graph, which can be compared for caliber identification. Uh, next, we have CT, CBCT, uh, which is very useful and can be acquired without opening a body bag or disturbing the remains and can be used to capture even the scattered teeth. Also, the morphology of the pneumatic, ethmoidal, and frontal sinuses can be obtained and can be used for comparison. So, other than these, we have portable x rays that can be carried to the spot of casualties. And uh, recently, the 3D scanners have replaced the conventional alginate and tray method of taking impressions because it, they're more dimensionally stable and more comfortable. So uh, basically it's a wand that's been connected to the computer, which is passed over the feed to produce virtual 3D models, which are more accurate when compared to the alginate impressions. So even if a study model made of gypsum or dye stone is available, uh, the surface can just be scanned using a 3D scanner and can be used as a proxy. So then we have the RFID tags, uh, that is the radio frequency identification tags. So these can be used to aid in personal identification. They're basically small tags or chips that has been implanted into the teeth or into removable appliance. And it can be used for body tracking. Um, so this was used for body tracking in the Hurricane Katrina. Uh, so in our college, we follow the GIA system, which is the digital information archiving software. So this we use to record and safely document all patient records with all the clinical photos and procedure photos, which could be quite useful for anti-mortem records. So the future of the forensic odontology in DVI will increasingly depend on these 3D data sets, 
And I would like to conclude my presentation by telling that it is possible in future, the process of 3D could be more automated, providing opportunities for more rapid and reliable anti-mortem and post-mortem model matching. Uh, these are my references. Thank you.